In this video we're going to have a look at the different separation techniques of filtration and crystallization. Okay, before we uh, start on what filtration and crystallization are, then let's have a look at some of the key words. So the first one is insoluble. That nice and simply means does not dissolve. Filtration is a technique that is used to separate a solid from a liquid. A solution is a mixture of a solute and a solvent. And breaking that definition down, you have a solute, which is a solid that's dissolved, and you have a solvent, which is a liquid that that solute dissolves in. So, for example, of a solute, you could have sugar, which dissolves in water. Sugar is your solute, and then your solvent is water. The next key word is crystallization. Basically, crystallization is where you take a solution, evaporate off the liquid, and it leaves you with your solute. That solute will be in the form of crystals. Now, there are two different types. If you leave it to cool over a long period of time, so it cools slowly, you're going to get large crystals. And then if you do it over a short period of time and cool it quickly, you'll have small crystals. The next key phase is what a saturated solution is. So, for example, if you take salt and you try and put it into water, you'll be able to dissolve it, you'll be able to dissolve it. And if you keep doing this, they'll get to a point where no more of that salt can get into the solution. So we say that it's saturated. So it means a solution that cannot dissolve any more of that solute. And then the final two keywords are hazard and risk. So if we start off with hazard, that is something that could cause harm. So for example, mercury in a thermometer is a really, really poisonous, really dangerous chemical. The risk, on the other hand, is the chance that some, that could cause harm. So for example, when you've got mercury inside the thermometer, there's a very little chance of that causing actual damage. However, if you were to drop the thermometer and break it, there's now a high risk and a high chance that it can cause damage. Okay, now we've gone through the keywords. The next phase is what is crystallization and filtration for? And where does it come in handy in science? So filtration, your key definition, as we said earlier, is to separate an insoluble solid and a liquid. And crystallization is to separate a soluble solid and a liquid. And a key example of where both of this occurs is when you try to get salt from rock salt. So rock salt is a rock that contains a salt. So the question is, how do you get from that rock salt to actual salt, table salt that we can put on our fish and chips? And the answer to that is using those two key techniques we've spoken about, filtration and crystallization, which I'm going to run through now with you. So to carry out this practical, you need to get yourself a pestle and mortar you need to get yourself an evaporating basin and a clay triangle. You'll also need a tripod, some rock salt, which is obviously what you're going to be breaking up and turning into salt, a conical flask, a beaker, a stirring rod and spatula, and a weighing boat, as well as a filter funnel, some filter paper, some distilled water, and a Bunsen burner and heatproof mat. So the first step before you can carry out filtration then is to take your rock salt and to put it into some sort of weighing tub. Now in this case I've just measured out a random amount. You might be asked to measure out a certain amount, you can use that with a set of scales. What you then do is you put it into your pestle and mortar and you crush it up. You continue doing this until you have a nice bit of crushed up rock salt and it's a fine powder. Once you've done that, the next step is to dissolve it then. What this is going to do is it's going to leave you with your actual salt itself dissolved in the solution. Any impurities, any of the bits of rock will actually stay because they're insoluble. So you do that by adding some distilled water and you continue at about 40 ml as I've done here and then you stir it until it's fully dissolved. Your next step then, once you've done that, is to filter it through. So grab yourself your filter funnel and conical flask, and then get yourself some filter paper and fold it like I've done here. This is something called the fluted filter technique, but you don't need to know that for the exam. Once you've got that in place, add in your solution and filter it through, and leave that to filter. If you've done it well enough, you should have a completely colourless solution down at the bottom, and then bits of impurity left in the filter paper at the top. Okay, so you've now got your solution of salt, you've removed all your impurities. The next step is crystallization. So what you do is you take your solution and add it to an evaporating basin and place it onto the clay triangle. 
You then need to get your Bunsen burner and you need to heat it gently to start to evaporate off the liquid. Now one of the major hazards of this experiment is the fact that you can get the really really hot salt spitting out whilst you're evaporating it. So there are a couple of techniques you can do, one of which is to every now and again remove the Bunsen burner so it doesn't get too hot so you don't get much spitting out. That is reducing the risk. So keep doing this repeatedly until eventually the water has evaporated and left you with your solute, which in this case is the salt that we wanted to extract. Okay, let's have a look at a practice question then. So this is an example of a six marker that you could have, which says you have a sample of rock salt. How could you use filtration and crystallization to separate the salt from the rock salt? And what are the hazards and how can you reduce the risk? So what I would like you to do is take a few minutes, pause the video and have a go at the actual question. When we come back, we'll go through the answers. OK, you should have paused that. Let's go through. So we'll start off with the how you can use filtration and crystallization to separate the salt from the rock. So the, there are loads of different marking points, so we'll go through each of them. The first one is to crush the rock up. You can include using a pestle and mortar and in some questions they will ask that, but what I was looking for here is to crush the rock up. The second marking point is to add water. Now just saying add water usually won't be enough. You need to talk about the fact that you're dissolving the solute or the salt. Try and use the science keywords that we have down here throughout all your explanations. The more you use better chance of getting a higher mark. Then filter it, filter the solvent to remove the insoluble residue. That's the detail you can put it in, but the major point they're looking for is to filter it. And then finally, crystallize it by evaporating the water. Again, if you can't remember the word crystallize, that evaporating bit is key. But try and get it all in because it just solidifies that knowledge of yours. So that will be four out of six. Now there are a couple of ways that you can get the final two marks in this six marker, which are looking at the hazards and how you can reduce that risk. So first of all, obviously as I've gone through in the video, the major risk is that you get spitting, which can cause burns. You could go into a bit more detail there. And then there are three ways that you can reduce the risk. Number one is wear eye protection to protect the eyes or goggles. Number two, remove the Bunsen burner before it's completely dry. Again, that reduces the amount of spitting. And number three, heat it gently. Don't heat it too strongly, otherwise it will again spit out. Okay, so that concludes the last part of this video. If you're feeling confident enough, you can have a go at the review section, which is how would you extract sugar from a mixture of sugar and sand? So think about what we've done today, filtration and crystallization, which one of these is soluble, which one is insoluble, and how would you do it? And that concludes this video.